Hello everybody one more time, my name is Alex Antino with Mercados Interactive Partners and in this episode we're going to be taking a look again at uh, Photoshop and in particular we're going to take a look at the basics of channels and why they're important and why you should be able to control them. Each image or each photo has uh, channels and they're composing the different qualities of the image uh, including the saturation, the lightness or, or detail uh, and of course the color of uh, the different portions of your image and so we're going to be taking a look at that so that we understand them and they should give you a little bit of a better idea of how to how to use them and how to control them to manipulate your images to make them fantastic. But before we do that, let's take a look at our sponsor for today. And of course, our sponsor for today is Mercados.com, M-E-R-K-D-O-S.com. Mercados is located in the Research Triangle area in North Carolina, and our focus is to help businesses of all sizes to make more money through the use of a strategic website design, custom digital media development, and web marketing. For more information, you can contact us at 888-525-8117 or visit us on the web at mercados.com, M-E-R-K-D-O-S.com. Make sure to check us out, M-E-R-K-D-O-S.com. Great stuff. So here I am in Photoshop, and uh, we have an image that has uh, yellow, blue, or usually called cyan, and magenta. So we have yellow, cyan, and magenta, and we have like really like the real blue, green, and red over here. And um, let me, before I actually go into the details of explaining what we have here, let me just talk a, a little bit about an introduction of channels and why are they important. So depending on what mode you're working on, so you can have like the RGB spectrum, you can be in the cyan, magenta yellow black spectrum or what we call the CMYK spectrum. Uh, so depending on the spectrum that you're working on you're going to have a different set of channels for your image and those channels basically are describing uh, the composition of your image and each image is composed of channels and uh, basically those channels are going to give you the information of color, they're going to give you the information of saturation, um, the lightness or the detail and of course uh, the transparency or what we call the alpha channel and um, there are differences between uh, what we refer to as additive color modes or models and subtractive color models and the difference is that um, additive basically is adding light of the spectrum uh, by adding new colors until you get to 100% white. And this happens very frequently, of course, in screens or in digital media. Uh, on the other side, or on the flip side, we have what we call the CMYK spectrum that usually translates to subtractive color mo models. And the subtractive color model basically means that you're adding inks as opposed to light. And by adding ink, you're uh, eventually absorbing and absorbing extra wavelengths until you end up with uh, what supposedly should be 100% black, but of course, because of the corruption of the ink, it actually doesn't end up being 100% black. It ends up being um, some, somewhat of a, of a gray. Um, and so, of course, that's why we add the extra ink of black so that we can get 100% black. So, with that in mind, Right here I have the yellow, the cyan, and the magenta colors in three circles. And I have them in a, instead of a normal mode, I have them in darken mode. So you can see that by darkening each one of the circles, you're actually getting the subtractive color model, which is the green, the red, and the blue or the RGB, right? Well, RGB. Uh, and of course, if we come here, we would see that this is not 100% black. Let's actually take a look at that. 
So this is, although, let's see, calling an RGB, so you can see that this is represented here by 54, 54, 57. In fact, that's showing us that it's actually a little bit tinted towards the blue. Uh, and also, if you take a look right here, you can see that that minus 2 is actually telling us exactly that, that it's tending towards the blue. In other words, you actually, by adding the inks, you actually really don't end up with 100% black. Uh, and um, so that's important to, to note, and that's why we uh, call it the CMYK, uh, because the K stands for the black, and it's being added as an extra ink. Uh, and we can transition in each one of the channels by doing Command-3, Command-4, Command-5, and Command-6. Let me show again. Command-3. And uh, let me point out here that the black is representing the ink. So cyan is actually this, 100% black, and then the absence of cyan is being represented by white. If I change to command four, the magenta, the magenta is being represented by this black circle here. So 100% black, or yeah, 100% black is representing the ink, whereas 100% white is representing the lack of ink. That is important because if we actually go back to mode RGB color, which is a more traditional color mode for uh, digital media. So let me go ahead and get rid of this. So, uh, well, actually, I can't get rid of them all at the same time without creating a new one. So let me just go ahead and create a new circle here. And this, let's see. So I'm going to create a circle. And this circle is going to be 100% red. So to do so, to set it to 100% red, what I can do is come here and type 25500 in the RGB. So that one's 100% red. And now I can actually get rid of this one. So we can do that. So I have the red. Let me duplicate that red. I duplicate it by holding the Option key and dragging. I'm now going to change this one to 100% green. So I'm going to set this one to 0, 255 in the green. And duplicate it one more time. And I'm going to change this one to blue, 255. All right, so we have the red, G for green, and B for blue, RGB. And if we change all this to instead of darken, we change it to lighten, we should get, of course, here the magenta, the combination of blue and red. We get the cyan, the combination of blue and green. And the combination of red and green, we get the yellow. And this should be 100% white. And if we take a look here at the bottom info panel here, we can see that indeed it shows us 255, 255, 255 in the RGB spectrum and in the lightness AB channel. It's 100% light with no cast for the A or the B channel. A stands for green and red, B for blue and yellow. Great stuff. But if we take a look at the channels, we can see that now this has transition uh, not as before with the CMYK, but now the light is being represented by white, 100% white. So let me show you here. The red, which is this circle here in the red channel, is being represented by white as opposed to black, which was the one before. Same thing with the green. The green is being represented with white, absence of green with absolute black and blue. Is represented here by uh, the upper circle here in white and the absence of blue by black here. Finally let me go ahead and change this mode to lab color so that we take a look at this spectrum as well. So lightness you can see that actually each one of the colors of the RGB spectrum actually have like the RGB they have different lightness 
uh, amounts. So they're not exactly the same uh, value, is what we call it. Um, if we take a look here at the A channel, you can see that this is a representation of the amount of green and red of the image. And here, you can see that this is a representation of the amount of blue and yellow. And that's why this that shows in black is because it has a lot of blue. And this parts that show in gray is because they don't have as much blue. 50% gray in this channel, 50% gray is actually neutral. Anything lighter than 50% gray is going to show up as yellow in the image, and anything darker is going to show up as blue. And that, of course, applies to the A channel as well. So they are channels that are not being represented by white or black, but by 50% by 50% gray and anything that varies from 50% gray um, then takes the cast of either blue and yellow or green and red. Why is this important to know? Because I mean technically if you think about it we could just like say well why is this even important? In fact when I started using Photoshop many many years ago I didn't even know uh, how to use the channels and that's precisely why I'm actually sharing this with you today uh, because reviewing my topics I was like thinking what is it exactly that um, that makes for a good topic with Photoshop users and um, the reason for knowing your channels is because you can transition to different color spectrums and modify make modifications to your images to the, to the different channels uh, and by earning that control uh, of your images, you you have uh, the capacity of being more programmatic with the different things you're going to communicate with your images. Uh, let's say, for example, that you had uh, a landscape image, and that landscape image had a very uh, yellow sky. For some reason, maybe a cast or your color balance, your white balance, your camera wasn't set up properly, so it ends up being extremely yellow. So by knowing that you can correct that in lab color by adjusting the B channel, then of course it makes your life a lot easier as a digital media artist. Uh, so of course controlling your channels is going to give you um, a better edge at controlling your photography in general. The other thing that the channels uh, allow you to do and I can show you here with this channel that I have here to invert is that they create uh, masks. They represent masks. As you can see here. Let me go ahead and do something to this one right here. So I'm just painting with black on top of this uh, blue layer here. And you can see that I'm actually representing let me go ahead and do that so that I show you. I'm actually representing what I did with a mask or an alpha channel. So channels not only represent color information, saturation information, and lightness information, but they also carry opacity information in the alpha channels or what we call masks. And so that is important also because those are the basics for adjusting um, what you can see and what you can't see and the levels of you what we what you can see and, and most of the time by merging images together that is of course a very very important uh, thing to understand so hopefully this introduction has been um, advantageous and hopefully you've learned a little bit more about channels and now they're not going to be as uh, intimidating as before Keep playing with your channels and before I let you go I just want to say thank you to all the people that are actually watching these videos um, I know that sometimes it can be hard for you to understand and you go back and forth and I I can see in the analytics of the videos that you guys are learning and trying to pay attention and and I just want to say kudos to you uh, that you're doing a great job and by learning you're going to become a much better digital artist so continue to pursue your dreams and I thank you so much for watching these videos and uh, letting me part letting us be part of your success. Again, my name is Alex Antenna with Mercados Interactive Partners and thank you so much for watching.